So in the summer of 2020, we decided to start looking for a home. Yes. Yeah. Um, COVID had hit and was going on. We had both kids at home. Byron and I both worked from home and we pretty quickly discovered that we didn't have enough house for everybody to be in the house yeah. at the same time. <laughs> yeah. We needed more space and so it had been on our agenda to start looking for you know, a new home. Even a before space. even yeah. before COVID. Before COVID. COVID just kind of really brought it to light, yeah. really. Uh, and then so there were, I guess, kind of two types of homes that we were looking at. Uh, mm -hmm. We looked at a lot of existing homes, but we wanted to get something that was, you know, fairly old. Yeah, we... <laughs> I, I guess the gamut. <laughs> we were going to be on our mm -hmm. Chip and Joanna. We mm -hmm. were going to do the whole fixer-upper thing. That's what we want, what we thought we wanted, yeah. <laughs> I think. Yeah. And we did, we found a home. We found, a, after some looking, after some searching, we found what we thought would have been the perfect home. And it didn't work out. And so... Yeah. Back to mm -hmm. the search. Yeah. And as you know, uh, around COVID, home prices shot up. I mean, everything went up. Even the value of our home went up, which was, you know, a good welcome thing to see. Right. But uh, when you're looking to move up in home size and buy something bigger, that's when, uh, you know, we started realizing, yeah. okay, uh, this is good and bad right it gets uh, a little iffy when yes you'll make more on your house but you have to pay more for the next house and again we were looking into a fixer upper type of thing and so the days of being able to walk into a house and pop in a few changes and boom you've got instant equity that was gone because everybody was looking for a house and so the cost or the prices shot up, the inventory was dwindling, and what we ended up running into were a lot of homes that were way overpriced for what you were actually getting. Yeah, true. So true. And uh, not to mention bidding wars that yeah. was coming up in the process with homes being overpriced. These were homes that you would think, uh, who's bidding? Right. <laughs> you know, right. On this property. <laughs> and, uh, so we said, you know, we're good with that. We're not going to yeah. participate in bidding wars. Yeah, we're uh, not not our style. But we still needed a home. Right. right? We still needed a home. And so uh, with prices being so elevated, we thought, okay, if we have to pay top dollar, why not just go with new construction homes anyway? That way we don't have to deal with trying to plan for con construction projects and move in and then remodel the kitchen or you know, put in a new floor and then that type of thing. We could just get it fresh, already built. Exactly right? what we want. Yep. And it went exactly as we planned, right? <laughs> <laughs> you funny. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, yeah, that 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 definitely did not go exactly as planned. So. So where do we go from here? So um, home values were high. Uh, we had given up our search for existing homes. Mm -hmm. And so we started moving into new construction. You know, mm -hmm. it took me some warming up to to get used to it because I wanted to buy something low, fix it up, mm -hmm. and then, you know, reap the benefits of the added sweat equity that we had put in the property. Yeah, and that, that that really wasn't happening. And so with new construction, as you mentioned, you're 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 paying top dollar. But the difference with that, like you said, if you're gonna pay top dollar either way, if that's where we're, if that's where the climate is, okay, but let's get exactly what we want. And so once we came to terms <laughs> with that, yeah, we discovered that there were do. really two options. We could either be the builder or we could choose a builder. Yeah, so two options, be the builder or choose the builder. Uh, so we started down the route of choosing a builder. Uh, and basically, when you choose a builder, you kind of go and you meet with other builders uh, to figure out which builder fits right with your personality, uh, the experience that they have, and the type of home that you want to build. Uh, and then, uh, how much do they charge for that particular home, right? right. So during that process, you're kind of interviewing all these different builders to really try and understand, uh, one, try to understand you know, what is the general price of this home that I right. want to build? 
and then two, you know, just kind of get a feel for the builder to see if y'all would be a good fit. Right. Figuring out what their process is. And that's one of the pros of working with a builder, of choosing that choose a builder option. They've done this a whole lot of times. And so they're bringing all of that knowledge, all of that experience into your project with them. Yeah. Yeah. And then so that's choosing a builder. The other option is that you can you can be the builder yourself, at least here in the state of Arkansas. Uh, where we live, uh, you're able to build your own residence. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be anything from you picking up the hammers and the nails and putting the house up yourself to uh, being more of a project manager. Mm -hmm. Hiring out subcontractors. Yeah, yeah. yeah, where you're hiring out the pieces of the work, but you're not ex actually doing a lot of the physical labor. Mm -hmm. And so um, those are your two options. Either choose a builder or be the builder. Uh, there's some pros and cons to each. Yep. You know, Christina touched on some of the pros. Yeah, uh, I got to hit them myself. <laughs> yeah. One of the pros is, you know, the knowledge and experience, right? Right. When you have a consultant, uh, someone who's coming alongside you, you know, you feel like, um, you know, there's, there's not as much risk involved, yep. right? You know, it's a very, um, I, I guess, laid back approach, mm -hmm. so to speak, to building a home. And I know people who have, build a home you say lay back wait a minute right <laughs> you know what are you talking about comparatively but comparatively <laughs> to being the builder choosing a builder means that you're putting most of the risk onto the builder that you choose mm -hmm. uh, also there's a less time commitment right when when choosing a builder because there's less that you have to do as a homeowner and uh, that's why you're paying the builder mm -hmm. And additionally, when you're choosing a builder, you have more financing options available to you. You'll be able to typically choose a more conventional mortgage type of process that you can do mm -hmm. because the builder is going to take out the construction loan and all of that. And you'll be working more directly with them versus trying to go to the bank and figure that part of it out yourself. Yeah, that's true. And then when it comes to design options and things with the builder, it can be a pro because the builder already has things laid out in like mm -hmm. neat packages for you to choose which model home you want or which uh, options you want on your floor plan. It's normally a small list, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's enough to kind of fit most people's needs right. and get the job done efficiently. Right. And if you're willing to bring more money to the table, you can always make upgrades from those pre-prepared packages and things that they have. And another benefit of that is you'll typically be able to walk into a model home that that builder has done before. And so with all their floor plans and packages and finishes, you're able to walk into a home that already exists and you're able to see exactly what that's going to look like and that's that's it's pretty valuable yeah yeah it is uh now some of the cons with you know choosing a builder is that you know with that builder comes all that experience and it's not free mm -hmm. uh, there's a cost involved normally it's anywhere from 15 to 20 percent of the total value of the home um so you're foregoing a significant portion of your home equity uh, when you choose to go with a builder, uh, but that's that's not a reason to discourage anyone from choosing a builder. Right, and in addition to that, those limited selection of floor plans and all of that, like we're having floor plans and design choices that you can just choose from, they're already laid out for you, that can be a pro, but it also presents a limitation yeah. because a lot of builders only have certain floor plans that they'll build from. A lot of builders, you go to something called Design Center and you can only choose from the options available at the Design Center unless you want to bring more money to the table and have those things done either pay for those upgrades or have them redone after you've already moved into your home, which is basically paying for it twice. Right. And you don't right. want to pay for stuff twice. If I can help it. <laughs> I'm too frugal to want to pay for stuff yeah, twice. Yeah, you know, yeah. if I pick these faucets, those are the faucets I want. I don't want to have to do, do that again. But on the flip side of the pros and cons of choosing a builder, you can also be the builder yourself. And there's... As with everything, there's pros and cons with that too. Yeah, there's pros and cons as well with, you know, being the builder. Um, one of the pros with being a builder is by skipping a builder, you know, there is more 
money <laughs> that you can keep in your pocket. I mean, now remember, the builder does bring a lot of experience to the table. So when you forego working with a general contractor, there goes that experience as well. Yeah. Uh, so even though it's a pro, you have to be careful uh, to make sure that that fits your personality. Mm -hmm. And we'll kind of touch more later in the video on lifestyles and personality. But that's a big one. Yeah. You get a chance to keep 15 to 20% of, of the house value. So in your, pocket. in your pocket. So think of a home that's, you know, say it's three hundred thousand dollars, right? Well, ten percent of that would be thirty thousand, mm -hmm. right? And if you get up to twenty percent, you're talking about sixty thousand dollars that you get a chance to keep in your pocket. So that was attractive to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and looking at these two different options and figuring out which way to go. Yeah. Another big one is that you are going to have complete design control your floor plan, mm -hmm. your cabinets, your roof, <laughs> literally everything about this everything. house, everything mm -hmm. you are going to get to choose from your hinges to your flooring, to the color of your baseboards, to your fixtures, every single thing you're going to get to choose. Yep. Uh, and so <laughs> like we had that as part of the pros, as you can see, that can also be a con, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when things aren't laid out for you and it's up to you to decide and make those decisions on your own, it can become a challenge. Very overwhelming because <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot to Did take on. Did you hear me when I say <laughs> you have to pick your hinges, your doorknobs, the front door, where your brick, your your brick color, the mortar color on the bricks. Yeah. Everything. 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 You have to make a decision on, and that 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 can be pretty challenging. Yeah, and and again, another one of the cons is you're taking on more of the risk. Mm -hmm. More of the risk. You know the attention that it takes and the time that it takes to do those things. You know these are some of the downsides of being an owner builder, or not even downsides, but more challenging right. you know, aspects of being an owner builder. So, you know, how do you determine, you know, which option is best for your lifestyle? Right. Like to be an owner builder or you build it versus find a builder, right? Or have a builder come in and help you. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, let's talk about being the builder and that lifestyle, right? Uh, I think that you have to be very organized <laughs> very organized very detail oriented there's a lot of a fine-tuned things that you're going to have to do lots of phone calls lots of emails text messages oh, yeah. pictures to take okay. conversations to keep up with it's a lot it's, it's a, a lot, lot. And on top of that being well organized you also have to enjoy planning you know, mm -hmm. you really have to enjoy that process because there's a lot of planning that goes into building a home as an owner builder. Um, I mean, you you have this big project in your head and it's important that you get it out onto paper so that you can, you know, categorize it so that you can plan it out. Mm -hmm. It's almost like goal setting, mm -hmm. right? You have mm -hmm. this idea in your head, this finished product, but you have to get it out on paper so that you can start adding those actionable steps to make it happen. Yep. So all of that is on the owner and the owner builder situation. Yeah. And it's not even just being organized or just enjoying planning. You have to be quick on your toes too. You have to be a quick like a quick learner because yeah. something like this, the very first time, it's kinda I feel like it's gonna end up being a kind of thing like riding a bike where once you know, you know, <laughs> but until you know, yeah, you do not know. <laughs> and so True. there's there's a lot of new information coming at you, a lot of different things coming at you and you have to you're gonna have to be able to retain that information and be able to give that information back. If your plumber wants to know, hey, where did you say each of the openings were going to go where mm -hmm. if your electrician wants to know how far apart you want your base plates and all these different things you have to be able to answer those questions that's very true and not even that but when when christina says be a quick learner it's really not that you need to know every detail right. Right. but you need to know the essentials mm -hmm. okay 
because normally when you're doing an owner builder, the builder, uh, you're, you're picking up the role as the builder, but mm -hmm. hopefully you should still be working with some great tradesmen or subcontractors that understand the skills and what they're doing. So, um, you know, you, you just need to know where to look when, yes. you do, when you do have a question and you don't have an answer to it. Uh, that's the most important part out of being that quick learner. Yeah. Uh, then also, I mean, you have to have good financial and business skills because uh, with owner builder, as we said earlier, there are limited options in financing. Yes. So in addition to there being limited options in financing, you're going to have a lot of other numbers thrown at you, like spreadsheets, calculations, budgets, budgets, lots of budgets, costs for supplies and materials. So all of this is where those business skills come in handy. Yeah. Uh, we're not saying that you need a business degree, but your personality, your lifestyle kind of needs to fit someone who uh, kind of enjoys, I guess, a little bit looking yeah. at all those numbers <laughs> and staying on track. So, I don't know. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, you also need to have lots of extra time because there's everything that we mentioned being organized, mm -hmm. the planning, the learning, the budgeting, yeah. all of that takes time. And that's on top of whatever other responsibilities you have. And so that is definitely something that you're going to have to keep in mind, along with patience. Um, <laughs> I don't think that this is something that everybody is built for. I personally, if it was just me, I don't think that I would be built for it. <laughs> I don't think I'd be built for it, but luckily, Mr. Mm. Jones is built for it, and he kind of helps balance me out on the patience thing, um, because you have to be prepared for delays. You have to be prepared to, you know, well, this isn't right. I need you to come back out. Mm -hmm. All kinds of different things like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, got, you have to have a lot of patience and soft skills, mm -hmm. because you're going to be communicating to people, trying to... Uh, convey, convey your vision over to them, you know, and in, in addition to that, managing expectations between you and the subcontractors when there are issues, you know, working through those issues. You can't be cussing people out. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> because uh, the subcontractors and tradesmen, you know, they're independent contractors as well they own their own independent separate businesses uh, and I think oftentimes people don't recognize that mm -hmm. like with a builder the builder has his company which is separate from each individual trade yes a trades person that has their companies so yes. in the end you know you're working with multiple companies that are taking part in this project uh, so, you know, you don't want to leave a sour taste in yeah. anybody's mouth. Yeah, because everybody's yeah. bosses. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, OK, we talked about the lifestyle, you know, the type of personality skills, type of mm -hmm. habits for the choose a builder option. What about or for the be a builder option? Mm -hmm. What about if you want to choose the builder? I mean, if you want to choose a builder, normally that lifestyle is somebody who's, you know, doesn't really care as much about the process mm -hmm. of building a they home. They just need a house. You know, <laughs> you know, they just want the final product. Yes. It's like, you know, I don't have the time right now to dedicate towards this. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe, I would say don't have the patience. Mm -hmm. I feel like there is a little bit more patience needed in owner builder mm -hmm. than builder you know, choosing yeah. a builder. But you still need that patience. But, but yeah. You still yeah. need that patience because all the delays and calling people back out and waiting on things to come in, mm -hmm. all of that is still going to be the case. It's just that your builder is going to be the one fielding it. But the time, the waiting, yeah. that's still there. So true. So yeah. true. So, I mean, when it comes to choosing a builder, it's it's a, it's a lighter load, mm -hmm. uh, but it but it still has its, its challenges. And it's suited more for someone who really doesn't have the time mm -hmm. or uh, the desire to put in the energy to um, to save 15 to 20%. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, that's kind of really what it boils down to. I would agree with that. And I would say also maybe someone who doesn't want to take on that risk because there is, you know, it's the risk of, 
your time. Um, mm -hmm. There's a financial risk that comes into play yeah, with it, and true. so if you're if you are kind of more comfortable dispersing that risk a little more, then choosing a builder might be a better option for you. Yeah, I think that's I think you hit the nail on the head with that one. Is that a pun? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right, and then so moving along, now that we've said, you know, you can choose a builder or be a builder, mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the option that we chose. <laughs> <laughs> so with all the stuff about, you know, the personality types and all of that, I, again, if it was just me, I would not have had the... <laughs> but... <laughs> But it's not just Christina. It's not just Christina. Luckily. Luckily. <laughs> I'm here as well. And I am a frugal person. Yes. You know, by nature. And so when I caught wind of, there was an opportunity to save some additional dollars by being an owner builder. Yeah. It did. It piqued my interest. Yeah. My, he, my antennas went up. And so. not just that. Byron likes to tinker. He likes to poke at stuff and figure it out. Yeah. And he likes numbers and budgets and spreadsheets and <laughs> all these different types of things. I like all that weird stuff. He loves all. I wouldn't call it weird. It's just, you know, that's just what you like. Yeah. And look at look at how it's coming in handy and if, it, if it's not clear which we chose the owner builder <laughs> option i just realized we didn't actually say it but yeah, yeah yeah we chose the owner builder option as what was going to kind of work best for us work best for our lifestyle and our family like we said he loves the numbers and all of that i want design control yeah she can't she can't <laughs> wait for the design piece. and so you know when when i I guess approached Christina with the idea of, hey, what if, you know, we try building it ourselves, you know? Um, I think it took a little bit of convincing of myself, mm -hmm. I know. Uh, I wasn't quite sure in the beginning, but also I think I had to convince Christina just a little bit. Just I mean, a bit. now Christina, she does, she, she believes in me, yes. like wholeheartedly. Yes. And, and that means a lot to me. But, but he also um, likes to. He he thinks very hard about his decisions, and I was like, "Look, I need a house," <laughs> and so I was concerned because this is a very big decision. It's a lot of very big decisions, but you know, if there is nobody on this planet I would trust more with a project like this than you. Oh. So when you said, "Like, no, for real, you know, I'm gonna do it," I okay. Let's do it. So let's just kind of give them an update about where we are. Yes. <laughs> so now that we made the decision and we're here, um, what was it? Not a few weeks Friday, ago. A few, the, yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. Fridays ago. A couple Fridays ago. Couple Fridays ago. Yeah, yeah, two Fridays ago. We closed down our lot. Yes. Right? So we are officially <laughs> landowners. And, well, we're already homeowners, but now we are also landowners mm -hmm. of the lot. <laughs> Yes, yeah, a lot. We, <laughs> Where our house will be um, sooner than later, yeah. hopefully. <laughs> and, and we'll have another video coming about how to pick out land, search mm -hmm. for land, choose a lot. Uh, so we won't give away the secret about whether our lot is in the subdivision or if it's like out in the country. You know, we'll leave that to the imagination until that video. For now. <laughs> Just for now. But um, yeah, so it's going to be exciting. Uh, you guys get a chance to come along with us yeah. in the journey. I'm sure we'll get some things wrong. Um, yes. My hope is we get a lot of things right yes. and just a few things wrong. Uh, but you'll be here to come along with us and learn as we learn yep. in this process. And I think it'll be fun. I think it's going to be fun. You know, just kind of figuring out what all is involved <laughs> as we go along. I think um, we both primed ourselves really well yes. to understand <laughs> that this may not go perfect. Yes. But in yeah, the but end, it's, it's gonna go. <laughs> yeah. In the end, we'll have you know we'll have the product that we want. Yeah. You know, at the price point that we want, and you know that fits our family and our family's needs. So, what do, what do we say next? Thank you for watching the video. <laughs> yes, and if you like this video, hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe, and you can also follow us at Build WBC on TikTok and Instagram for kind of a little more up-to-the-minute updates before we are back to you guys with these 
like more informational videos. Yeah, and if you have any questions, just feel free to leave them in the comments yep. uh, or any suggestions about additional videos that, that you would like. like. Yep. Uh, we have a list of videos that we're planning to release or record and release. Mm -hmm. uh, so expect those in the coming weeks. Uh, and until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. All right, so in, sum in the summer, <laughs> did I scare you? <laughs> I just wasn't clear on which one of us was going to talk. Yeah, that's why I went ahead and just started. Okay, okay.